class. Today, we're going to talk about burns. How many of you have had a burn? Probably several of you. I know I have. Have you been to the beach lately? Stayed out there too long? Got a little pink? Red baby? That's a sunburn. How about if you were cooking bacon? That grease splattered up on you and those little spots on your hand? That's supposed to be burning from that oil. Today, we are going to talk about the different types of burns. The first degree burns, second degree burns, and third degree. Our first degree burns are going to be like your sunburn. The second degree burns are going to have a blister. And then the third degree are going to be your most severe burns that we get. Also, along for, along, as well as identifying the different types of burns, we are going to learn how to treat the different types of burns. So, Let's not get burned by our funny remarks, and let's get started. Our first degree burns are the least severe burns that we can occur to get. Like I said, you've been out to the beach, you kind of turned a little bit red. That's one of our identifying factors of a first degree burn, is a sunburn. Now, some, not all sunburns are first degree. You can receive more than a first degree burn with a sunburn. And there's other types of burns that you can get that aren't a sunburn that's still a first degree. Another identifying fact of a first degree burn is that it's warm to the touch. And what color do you associate with warm? Hot. It is also pink to a red color. So our first degree burns are going to be pink to red. burns are a little more severe than the first degree, but not quite as much as the third. Our second degree burns are going to have a blister. That, whether that blister is been popped or if that blister is still intact. We're going to treat it differently, but we're going to talk about that later. As well with our second degree burns, it's similar to the first degree, they're going to be hot to the touch. As well as being red in color, just for the same reason that it, we associate red with hot. And our third degree burns are the most severe burn you can occur. But it's the most severe because it burns through so many more tissues than others. It burns through the skin and the tissues and the nerves. Because it's burning through those nerves, a first degree burn, I mean a third degree burn, might not be painful. So how many of you have had a s'more? If you took your little six foot long and it caught on fire, it kind of turned a charcoal grayish brown color, right? Well, third degree burn is gonna be very similar to that. Your third degree burns are going to be black to gray in color. So, let's test your knowledge with quiz time. When it pops up. Sam, can you identify this type of burn? That'd be a second degree. Yes, it is a second degree, and you can tell because right here is a slight blistering right there. It's been popped, but it still wasn't there. Byron, can you identify what kind of burn is below this white band? First degree. That's correct. It is a first degree. You can also see that on the, this part of the hand, there's a little bit of blistering right here. So that part is a second degree. And Andrew, can you identify this one? Third degree. Yes, that's correct. It is a third degree. And it is, you can see that it's black here. And I know I said that third degree burns are going to be black to gray in color. And you can see some red here. That out layer, out layer of that third degree might be a second degree or first degree out layering it. That's why it's pink in color. So now that we know how to identify the different types of burns, let's learn how to treat the burns. 
For our first degree burns, they are very simple. You can treat these at home on your own, or if you really feel the need, you could go to the emergency room or to your doctors. At home, you can run cold running water for 20 minutes over these burns. You can do this up to 45 minutes after the burn occurred, and it still will help. Along with running cold water, if you can't get the part that's been burned out of that cold water, you can apply a cold rag to it. And then you're going to simply wrap the burn and get it covered to protect it. You are never going to apply ointment to any of these types of burns. The reason being is if you have to treat it later on, you don't want to have to try to remove that ointment before treating it. So, for an example, I have here on my arm a little pink spot. Let's get this side up. You can see I have a little pink spot right here, not very big. I simply can just run that cold water, run water over it, and then to cover it, a simple band-aid like this will do the job, job justice for covering it, and it's still loose but still covered. burns because there's a little bit difference to it there is that blister you're going to treat it differently with the blister and without the blister if the blister is still intact you're going to treat it pretty much the same way as the first degree burn you're going to run or apply cold water for 20 minutes after for 20 minutes you can do this for 45 minutes after the burn has occurred and it still will help and then you are simply just going to loosely wrap it if the blister has been popped, the only thing you're going to do is loosely wrap this burn. What we're not going to do for our second degree burns is apply ointment. Like I said, very, like the first degree, we aren't going to apply ointment because it's going to take longer for the doctors to remove it if they have to treat it. And second degree and third degree, you should be considering going to the emergency room for these burns, depending on the severity. If the blister is still intact, you are not going to break that blister. The blister needs to stay intact in order for it to help heal the body. If that blister pops, it's opening another layer of skin, which is why we do not run cold running water or apply cold water to a second degree burn with a blister that has been popped. The reason is, if a person has a second degree burn and the blister has been popped, that layer of skin is removed and that's touching deeper skin and this can cause the body to go into shock if cold water gets to it. So remember we're not applying ointment just like the first degree. So I'll show you here. I have on my arm, let me get this up again, a red mark on my forearm. So I'm just going to grab some tape here. Simply, I can just simply put a thing right here like that after applying the tape. Just set it over top and tape around it. And it's still loose, but still protected. Now, for our third degree burn, because of the most severe, we're going to treat it completely different than the other two. Um, we're not going to run the cold running water because, again, similar to the first and second degree with the blister that has been popped, it can cause the body to go into shock whether because those nerves and tissues underneath the skin have been damaged. Um, a third degree burn, you should be going to the emergency room. Whether you put that cold water on it, that person's body still might go into shock. And again, you are not going to apply ointment to a burn. For the same reason with the other ones is the doctor has to remove it before they can treat it. It just takes longer to treat it. And then the only thing you are going to do is loosely wrap this burn because you don't want to run that cold running water and you don't want to apply ointment. You just want to get it loosely wrapped and get that patient to the hospital. For our third degree, you do this, I'm going to show you how to treat a third degree burn by using my hand, which is what we saw in the quiz kind of video picture. So you do this the same for first degree, second, and third degree. I just wanted to 
show you what, at least from their view. So what you're going to do is you're going to apply a, something in between your fingers, any of them that are, have been burned, you're going to place a pad in between it, and then you can just simply wrap it like this after that. The reason you don't want to, the reason you just apply this wrapping in between the two fingers is to, because you don't want the skin to knock together. And then after you get that wrapping on, you can just apply a thin a layer of tape just to hold it in place, like so. So, while you're in, can you explain to me how to treat a second degree burn with a blister that has been popped? Run cold water over it. Good. How long would you run that cold water? 15 minutes. Not quite. Try, try one more time. 10? No. Sam, do you want to help her out? Okay, go. 20. Yes. Good job. And then how, Andrew, how do you wrap a hand that has been burned? Put something in between the fingers? Yes, that's correct. And then, Nathaniel, can you tell me why you don't want to apply ointment to a burn? Because it might burn? Because it might burn. <laughs> not quite yet, not quite there. Um, how about, Andrew, do you want to help her out? Because it'll take longer for treatment. Yes, that's better. Uh, the reason being is you don't, the doctors have to, if they have to remove it, then it just takes longer for treatment. That's correct. So today we learned about the different types of burns and how to identify them. We learned that the first degree burns are gonna be similar to your sunburn. They're gonna be a pinkish color and they're gonna be warm to the touch. The third degree burns, I mean second degree burns, are going to have a blister. That blister might be popped or still intact. And then it's going to be hot and cold hot to touch and red in color. And then the third degree burns are just going to be your most severe and they're gonna be gray to black in color and they're not necessarily gonna have pain. And treating all of these burns, we don't want to apply any ointment. For the first degree and second degree, you're, the second degree with the blister and the first degree, you're going to just run cold running water for 20 minutes over these burns and apply wrapping loosely. A third degree burn and second degree burn with a blister that has been popped, you're just going to simply loosely wrap. For your homework today, for the next time, I want you to read Proverbs, study Proverbs 20 verse one and Proverbs 31 verse four, as well for the, verse, for the upcoming verse, book, verse quiz, and also review pages 26 to 41 in your book. Have a great day.